So what's good TMG fam? It's your boy and I'm back with another reaction video, man. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute. Now, this next video, bro. <laughs> Lambo owner schools lying cop. Now, the first thing I think about <laughs> when I see Lambo in the title of a video, right, is like, and having to do with cops is whether or not somebody is being profiled because of the type of car they drive. Um, in my opinion, I think it happens a lot. I think it happens a lot. I think people or cops get a preconceived notion of what type of person in their mind, you know, just based off of speculation, um, in their mind of what type of person this is driving this car. Like I come from an era back in the day where Chevy's box Chevy's was a thing like old school Chevy's eighties model Chevy's, you know, caprices, different things like that were, were what everybody was wanting to buy. You know what I'm saying? I wanted one so bad and I finally got one, you know what I mean? When I became able to drive, but Chevrolet, Chevy Caprices, eighties models, box Chevys, all kind of stuff. That was what, but it had turned into and it turned into what they classify in my town. Now, I'm not talking about where y'all from. I'm only speaking of from my perspective, right? In my town, it turned into what they call, quote unquote, a dope boy car, right? So what I mean by that is basically somebody who's selling drugs. That became the, the term for those type of cars where I was from. Dope boy car. You see somebody in a box Chevy? Oh, that's the dope boy car, dope boy car, dope boy car. So it it started to become um, where I started getting pulled over a lot and being searched a lot. I was I didn't have drugs. I didn't. I liked the car, but the car came with with something. You get what I'm trying to say? So when I see Lambo owner, I think, uh oh, cop probably think this dude is wild. This dude is probably you know whatever his preconceived notion of him could probably lead him to put lead him to believe something that may put this cop into a situation. So, but we're going to check it out though and let me know what was the what was the car or thing when you were little or when you grew up that you wanted but you knew you didn't need to get it because of what it could situations you it could put you in. You know what I mean? It's just like insurance companies, you know, when you buy a car and it's a specific color or it's a specific kind your insurance goes up. Why? Because they feel like that's a specific type of car that may lead to accidents or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So that's basically what I'm trying to say. But we're going to get into it. Check this video out. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. Join the fam. Moment of silence for the haters. That's enough. Now run the likes up, baby. Let's get to the video. Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers driver's licenses, citations, and qualified immunity, and is brought to us by Daily Driven Exotics' channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Sometime in May of 2018, YouTuber, entrepreneur, and supercar enthusiast Damon Fryer was traveling through Beverly Hills, California when he was stopped by an officer from the Beverly Hills Police Department. How's it going? How are you? Good, thanks. Can I see your driver's license, please? Yeah, sure. Do you have your registration and insurance? Yep. What brings you to California? Excuse me? I said, what brings you to California? Why would that be any of your business? I'm just hanging out. Because you have a Canada driver's license? You don't have a. Where's your California driver's license? I don't live here. I give you Canadian driver's license. So that's exactly what I'm trying to figure out. You're giving me smart answers, but I'm trying to get to the bottom of something. It's not a smart answer. I don't, you're not you're not customs. I don't need to explain to you why I'm here. Okay. So you need a California driver's license to drive in California. No, you don't. Are you a tourist? Yes. Okay. Do you have your passport with you? Yep. Can I see it? Yep. Do you have your international driver's license? Excuse me. Do you have your international driver's license? You're a cop, you should know I don't need that. I'm a Canadian citizen. You have a treaty with us. I'm gonna exit the vehicle to get my passport. What is that? You actually do need it, just so you know. No, you don't. Okay, we'll find out right now. Sure. Okay. Why'd you pull me over? 
The modified exhaust, the stop sign. There's no ran. modified exhaust. Okay. And the what? Sit in the car. The, the what were you about to say? The stop sign you just ran. I didn't run a stop sign. I just saw you. Which one? Let me just sit down. Which one? I just told you. You're so busy asking me questions. You're not answering my, you're not listening to my answers. Hold on, did we? No, we didn't. This just came out. Why do we keep being presented with this same situation, man? With this whole driver's license. You see, like I had to literally go out of the video to be like, ah, do we look, we, see, we haven't. This one just dropped this past month. Like, bro, what is going on with this situation? Why does this occur and reoccur over and over again? With this license situation, bro, this is that, that would piss me off, literally. I told you, you're so busy asking me questions. You're not answering my, you're not listening to my answers. I said the one on Lomitas. I didn't run any stop sign. I have everything on camera. Okay, 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 okay. So do I. Pardon? I said so do I. Sir. Sir, the car don't get out. I hope you got it on camera. That's crazy. No, I won't. Wow. International driver's license. He obviously doesn't know what he's talking about. The officer asks Mr. Fryer if he has an international driver's license and informs him that he is required to possess a driver's license issued by the state of California in order to legally drive in the state. The officer is likely referring to an international driving permit, which is commonly mistaken as an international driver's license, but does not carry the same degree of privilege as an actual license issued by a government body. An international driving permit is a translation of a domestic driver's license that allows the holder to drive a private motor vehicle in any country or jurisdiction that recognizes the document. International driving permits are governed by three international conventions. The 1926 Paris International Convention relative to motor traffic, the 1949 Geneva Convention on road traffic, and the 1968 Vienna Convention on road traffic. When a state is contracted to more than one convention, the newest one terminates and replaces previous ones. International driving permits are currently recognized by approximately 150 countries and jurisdictions under the authority of the Vienna and Geneva Conventions, respectively. Although the United States is among the countries that recognizes international driving permits, they are not necessarily required in every situation, and each state has the power to dictate what form of driver's license they choose to accept. However, in 1943, the United States entered into an exclusive agreement with Canada, Mexico, and other South American countries that allowed interstate travel without the requirement for an international driving permit at the Convention on the Regulation of Inter-American Automotive Traffic. Furthermore, while California Vehicle Code 12500 states that, quote, a person may not drive a motor vehicle upon a highway unless the person then holds a valid driver's license issued under this code. The code also clearly recognizes that certain persons may be exempt from this law, and California Vehicle Code 12502 lists, quote, a non-resident over the age of 18 years having in his or her immediate possession a valid driver's license issued by a foreign jurisdiction of which he or she is a resident as a valid exemption. Mr. Fryer is well within his rights to travel into any American state without first acquiring a license issued by that state and that has been the case for nearly a century how are you doing great how are you awesome man i'm allowed to film you i didn't say you are i don't know why you're shining the light on my camera then i'm just making sure i can see inside the camera. and there's 11 out on the footbeat well you don't need to do that by following the camera you're very defensive sir why is that because you pull me over and you don't know what for i told you what for Look at your camera, you'll, you'll be able to see what for. I didn't do anything though. You lied about the, the stop sign. I didn't and lie. you don't understand what it, what exhaust is on my car. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so I'm citing you for not having a California driver's license. And I'm also citing you for having a modified exhaust. So go ahead and sign right here, sign a mission of guilt. Just promise you don't take care of the citation. What's that for? I just told you. No, you didn't. What was it? Modified exhaust, right? One. Yeah. You're not having a California driver's license. I don't need a California driver's license. Okay. So can you sign here, please? And if I don't? I have to take you to jail. Really? Yeah. Here, the officer informs Mr. Fryer that if he refuses to sign the citation, then he will be taken to jail, which aligns with California law. Under subsection B of California Vehicle Code 4302, an individual may be arrested and taken before a magistrate if they, quote, refuse to give his or her written promise to appear. I don't like that, man. Because I feel like... 
and it, I, maybe this this may be some like some some buried trauma that I have. Maybe that's what it is, some trauma. Because even in school, if you got written up and they be like, sign this, I'm no man. Even at work, sometimes if you had a job back in the day and I got it, did something, they be like, well, sign. I, just give me my. I don't want to sign because I'm still going back and forth with you about. It, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, because I feel like if I sign it, I'm admitting that I was wrong and I'm telling you I wasn't. You know what I'm saying? Like I had this issue back with a trucking company and they felt as though this was reason. And I told them, no, this is what happened. No, it was out of my control. Even the company that I was delivering to backed me up saying it was out of his control, but the company I worked for still wanted to write me up for it. And I'm like, no, no. So they wrote it up and said, sign it. And I said, no, because I'm not admitting to guilt when I know I didn't do anything wrong. You know what I'm saying? So I always, maybe that's just a trauma in me, man, but I feel like, no, I'm not signing that and admitting to that. Even if you say, oh, that's not an admission of guilt, I st it still don't make me feel better. So I can understand some people being combative against that because that'd be my initial urge. No, I'm not signing that because I feel like I'm admitting guilt. Even when you tell me it's not, I feel like I'm still admitting guilt. You're in court, which essentially translates to refusing to sign a citation. As the officer explained, citations are not an admission of guilt, and they serve as nothing more than a promise to appear before the court regarding the alleged violation. As we have discussed many times on ATA, officers are generally within their authority to arrest citizens for nearly any violation, regardless of whether the violation is a... And I get that. I just still don't like it. <laughs> misdemeanor or a felony offense. And citations offer citizens a convenient way to avoid being taken to jail until they can appear before a magistrate. If mm. Mr. Fryer had refused to sign the citation, the Beverly Hills officer would have been well within his authority to arrest him and take him to jail until a magistrate became available. It should be noted that not all states have drafted laws that require citizens to sign citations, and it is often left to the officer's discretion and departmental policy to determine the appropriate course of action. The Beverly Hills officer also also informs Mr. Fryer that he is being issued a citation for a modified exhaust, and Mr. Fryer claims that he does not have an aftermarket exhaust on his vehicle. Section 27150.1 of the California Vehicle Code prohibits the sale and installation of motor vehicle exhaust systems that fail to meet the regulations and standards applicable to the code, and Section 27150.2 states that exhaust systems installed on motor vehicles with a manufacturer's gross vehicle weight rating of less than 6,000 pounds may emit no more than 95 decibels of sound when and tested in accordance with Society of Automotive Engineers standard. Therefore, even if Mr. Fryer's exhaust system was not modified in any way, he may still be in violation of California's vehicle code if his exhaust emits a sound louder than 95 decibels. When a citizen is issued a citation for a modified exhaust in California, they are generally required to obtain a certificate of compliance from a state testing facility pursuant to section 44036 of the California Health and Safety Code to ensure that their vehicle is compliant with California's exhaust noise standard. Whether or not Mr. Fryer was actually in violation of California's exhaust laws is impossible to determine without the proper sound measuring equipment. But the officer would be within his authority to issue Mr. Fryer a citation for a modified exhaust based on his observations and allow a court to determine whether the citation was in fact valid. Is that part of the, like, not having a driver's well, license thing too? Oh, yeah. So, like I said, it's not an admission of guilt, just promising you'll take care of the citation. So with that being said, your car your car is subject to tow. What? Why? Because you're driving a driver's license in California. I can do that. No, you can't. Yeah, I can. I have a Canadian driver's license. It's not illegal to drive here with that. Okay, that's what I'm telling you. So my suggestion to you is I'm not going to tow your car. I'm letting you know that your car is subject to tow. Okay? So with that being said, I suggest that you probably go and park your car somewhere and not drive anywhere. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay, do you have any questions about it? Yeah, I just don't understand how you don't understand the law and how you're like enforcing something on me that's not legal. Okay, like I said, yeah, it's all good. you're innocent until proven guilty, right? Yeah, for like sure. I said, the site, send an admission of guilt, just promise you'll take care of the citation. Yeah. With that being said, sir, if I see you again driving the car, I will tow it. Yeah, I, you have no permission to tow my car. I do. No, you don't. Okay, so I can do it now. I'm choosing not to. Okay, yeah. so I'm gonna get into this little match with you. I'm just letting you know and yeah, I'm yeah. advising right now because I would rather not do that. <laughs> because you know you can't. I do. <laughs> I mean, you can, but at the end I of the day, I'm right, you're wrong, but you'll still do it. I get it. 
Here, the officer informs Mr. Fryer that his vehicle is subject to being towed because he does not have a California-issued driver's license. And Mr. Fryer disagrees. As we discussed earlier, Mr. Fryer's Canadian... I feel like if this was a video game, they should pause the video game and take a round of every cop in that area and say, bro, this is what should happen or this is the law and this is how you should handle and we need to train on this instance bro this is crazy so if we're only catching this few imagine how many times this is happening Canadian driver's license is recognized by all 50 states as valid, and the officer would not be within his authority to tow Mr. Fryer's vehicle based on this violation. All that said, officers are permitted to make reasonable mistakes while in the field under the mm -hmm. doctrine of qualified immunity. Qualified immunity is a legal concept that protects government officials from lawsuits alleging that the official violated a citizen's rights, and was first formulated in the 1982 Supreme Court case of Harlow v. Fitzgerald. The Fitzgerald case established the notion of qualified immunity for federal government officials, and it wasn't until the 1986 case of Malley versus Briggs that the Supreme Court considered expanding the protections offered by qualified immunity to state police officers. The notion of qualified immunity is built upon the idea that officers should not be subject to being sued for making an honest mistake in the field, and whether or not an officer is entitled to qualified immunity depends largely on the reasonableness of their actions. In the 1987 case of Anderson versus Creighton, the Supreme Court held that, quote, whether an official protected by qualified immunity may be held personally liable for an allegedly unlawful official action generally turns on the objective legal reasonableness assessed in light of the legal rules that were clearly established at the time it was taken. The court concluded that so long as an officer's actions were reasonable and no clearly established jurisprudence existed to show otherwise, then they would be entitled to qualified immunity regardless of their actions. There are a litany of issues associated with qualified immunity, but one of its biggest flaws is the notion that police misconduct must violate violate a right that had already been clearly established by previous cases, which essentially leaves first-time victims of police misconduct with no legitimate recourse for their experiences. For example, in the 2017 Supreme Court case of Baxter v. Bracey, an appeals court ruled that it was not clearly established that it was unconstitutional to release a police dog on a surrendering suspect sitting with his arms raised, despite the fact that the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals had previously ruled that officers violated the Fourth Amendment when they released a police dog on a suspect who had surrendered by lying down. The officers essentially hinge their argument for qualified immunity on the distinction between sitting down with hands raised as a form of surrender versus laying down on the ground. These ambiguous distinctions in what is and is not considered clearly established law are a major point of controversy, and many legal scholars can tell- I can see why. If I lay down and I'm surrendering and the dog still attacks me, you write them, if I survive, if I survive, <laughs> You right, I'm suing y'all. What you mean? Arms raised and laying down is surrender. What? Most of the times when you see somebody surrendering, it's either them on their knees and hands behind their head or them on the ground because you're hearing them say, get on the ground, get on the ground, get on the ground. So you telling me I'm on the ground and I'm still getting bit? Nah, bro, come on, man. Now, and you trying to get Im immunity? This, this stuff is crazy. I bet it's a controversy and that the current interpretation of qualified immunity has devolved into an all-encompassing shield to protect obvious corruption and misconduct. Since its inception, the qualified immunity doctrine has been thoroughly criticized for failing to consider the practical and human implications associated with the concept. But nonetheless, the Supreme Court has refused to consider cases challenging the legality and constitutionality of the doctrine, although it has had many opportunities to address the subject. So while the officer was clearly wrong about his authority to tow Mr. Fryer's vehicle, there there is a very high chance that he would be entitled to qualified immunity if he had decided to tow the car because of the <laughs> lack of clearly established precedent regarding the legality of driving without a state issued license. Well, then you can see the issue then. If I have qualified immunity on a lot of things, a wide range of things, then what is the incentive for me to train myself to know policy and law and everything like that? What's the, what's the, you know, if I mess up, hey, I got immunity. It's cool. You know, I I think that's, I mean, most people don't get afforded that on their job. No, if you work in a, a dangerous environment and you mess up, no, you, you may get a written warning or whatever the steps is, then a verbal, then a, then it may, no, it may be a warning, then a verbal, then written, then, you know what I'm saying? It, whatever the progressions is, and then you're gone. 
having this blanket immunity to where you're not being held for your mistakes, then what's, why even try? Why even, you know what I mean? It's supposed to be a standard. It's supposed to be a standard, right? That's what I always thought. Because we held them to a certain standard and they took that badge and they held themselves to a certain standard. You know what I mean? At least from the good cops that I know of, they take that shield seriously. And they hold themselves to the utmost, you know what I'm saying? Standard. Like, I, I don't know. Okay, so it's that's playing hardball. It's all good, dude. Okay, so like I said, if I see you again, I will tow your car, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay? You have yourself a good night. Yeah, you too, man. Thank you. After issuing Mr. Fryer citations for driving without a valid license and a modified exhaust, he left the scene without further incident. After conferring with his friends for a moment, Mr. Fryer got back into his vehicle and drove to the Beverly Hills Police Station to file a formal complaint. Okay, so tell me, uh... I'm gonna record this. That's it's uh, ready to record it. No, 24-7. For myself. All okay, right, thanks. Good yeah. Um, so, uh, what documentation do you have, like, as far as your ID or license or... Because you gotta understand, I'm trying to recreate what you're telling me happened in the field. Yeah, valid uh, insurance and registration. So you're visiting? I am. Okay. And you reside? In, in First Columbia, Virginia. in Victoria, yes. Okay. And that's um, all valid current information. Any foreign any foreign resident that has a, uh, a foreign issued driver's license. I'm not a resident. Drive. No, I'm just saying oh, okay. they can drive, all right? right? Yeah. So you got, a, you got a citation for something you should not have received. Correct. That's item one. And then the threat to take my vehicle away from me based on that citation, which doesn't exist. Okay, so the good news is that did not happen. You have your car. I have my car at the moment, but I want to go for dinner in Beverly Hills, and I don't want to be harassed while I'm here for the rest of my five-day visit. Got it. Okay, so then what is the desired outcome? Did you want me to speak to the officer about this? What is your end goal? What is it that you'd like to have happen? Correct. I've been through this. So... Uh, I would like a, uh, I'd like to file a complaint, mm -hmm. and I'd like the officer to be uh, educated on the international Canadian U.S. driving, whatever the legal jargon is that I can drive on this license, right. um, and I'm not to have my vehicle towed if he sees me around Beverly Hills again. Okay. Um, I could very easily say I don't want to file a complaint. Uh, I just want him to talk to the officer. But I have a funny feeling in this situation that if he only talks to the officer, there will be nothing on record that I was ever here and this has ever happened. So I'm going to make sure I file a complaint. That way, if this does happen a second time, there will be a record of it. So what kind of car do you have? I have a 2016 Lamborghini Huracan. Ooh, nice. I'm not a big car guy, but that, that sounds expensive. What else can I help you with? That's it. That's I would just like to go for dinner and not get pulled over and get my car towed tonight. Is that going to work? Or are you going to enforce just try, that? Just, just try it safely. That's all I can say. I always do, sir. All right. Yeah. Nice meeting you. Take care, sir. Thank you. After filing his complaint, Mr. Fryer left the station and went to dinner without any issues. It is unclear whether Mr. Fryer followed up this encounter with additional legal action. Overall, the Beverly Hills officer gets an F for misrepresenting California's license requirements, displaying a fundamental misunderstanding of the laws regarding foreign drivers, and for threatening to tow Mr. Fryer's vehicle despite having no legal authority to do so. It is clear from the video that the officer was not within his authority to issue Mr. Fryer a citation for driving without a license, but it is impossible to determine whether this officer issued these citations out of ignorance or negligence. Whatever the case may be, it is difficult to justify being unaware of a nearly 100 Hundred year old agreement between major countries that directly applies to many aspects of policing. And given the fact that Beverly Hills is one of the foremost tourist destinations in the entire country, it's also hard to believe that this officer has never encountered a foreign driver's license before. As mentioned earlier, it would be extremely difficult for Mr. Fryer to seek any kind of recompense if his car had been towed due to the current interpretation of qualified immunity. And this interaction highlights the fact that qualified immunity can play a role in even the most minuscule and unassuming police encounters. It should also be noted that the officer originally claimed that he stopped Mr. Fryer for running a stop sign, but ultimately did not issue him a citation for it. This is an interesting aspect of the encounter because it was the only offense that the officer would have had undeniable evidence to prove in court if he were recording the encounter as he claimed. It is unclear why the officer did not write Mr. Fryer a citation for running the stop sign, but it very well could have been because Mr. Fryer informed the officer that he had a dash cam and had been recording as well. Much of the officer's conduct in this interaction is questionable and subject to speculation, but but I will leave it to you to decide what you believe the officer's true intentions were. Mr. Fryer gets an A plus for 
remaining calm and collected throughout the interaction, respectfully challenging the officer's conduct, and for following up this encounter with the proper channel of complaint. Despite being issued questionable citations, threatened to have his car towed, and likely subjected to an illegal detainment, Mr. Fryer remained sincere and professional through the entire stop. This is the second encounter for Mr. Fryer's YouTube channel that I have featured here on ATA, and his ability to remain calm and cordial while challenging officers is... That might be what it was. It's this second time being on this channel. That might be what it commendable. was. Mr. Fryer was well aware of the legalities surrounding foreign driver's licenses, and he made a legitimate effort to inform the officer that he was making a mistake. Not only did Mr. Fryer follow up this interaction with a formal complaint, but he also documented the entire process to ensure that evidence of his complaint existed independently from the paper form that he submitted to the department. Based on Mr. Fryer's prior history with California officers, he likely learned this from previous experiences with the department's losing critical evidence in a case. Police departments and municipal records departments are often understaffed and overburdened, and it is not uncommon for them to misplace or blatantly mishandle body cam footage. Independently documenting police encounters and public information requests will guarantee that a record of the event exists without relying on the party in question to produce evidence against themselves. I commend Mr. Fryer for navigating this encounter with calculated professionalism, and I highly encourage you all to give the Daily Drive Exotics channel your support and let them know that ATA sent you. Let us know if there's an... So, um, where, where I salute him is for heading to the police station right after the encounter. Um, because most people would, would have felt good after their their interaction or they would have felt some type of way after the interaction and would just, you know what I mean, went on about their day, just been pissed about it, went home or whenever, wherever they were staying, went out that, that night later. He took it a step further and went and filed the complaint. And I appreciate him for that. Because as soon as he said... You know, I don't want to be driving around later on and get pulled over and have to deal with the situation again and nobody have a record of me being here. You know what I mean? That was that was basically the smart thing to do for him. So I'm I'm super glad he did that. Shout outs to him for that, man. Um, like I said, man, I need them to kind of correct this situation. You see more and more people this happening. This is this dude's second time this has happened. So that alone should let you know that it's happening way too often and they got to get that together. You know what I mean? So... But he did the right thing. He filed the complaint, told him what he wanted done. And um, that's the way you handle it right there, bro. Can't get no better than that. Y'all get at me in the comment section, though. Let me know what y'all think, how it made you feel. And, um, yeah, stick around and stay tuned. Until the next reaction of my peace, y'all stay solid. Hey.